Hello, this is Hammersmith Chess Club, junior hour in five minutes or so. This video is the summary of another session on British legends, which we had in September 2020 on Mir Sultan Khan. Now, that name sounds unfamiliar to British chess players. So let me start with a short explanation. Another person born in the same Punjab province, the British Indian Army Major, politician and diplomat Sir Malik Umar Hayat Khan came to London for five years from 1929 to 1934, during which he supported the call for an independent Pakistan state. And the so-called Pakistan Declaration was prepared in his house. For us, as important is that he had employed two local Punjab chess players who accompanied him for most of the time in London, Ghulam Fatima, and Mir Sultan Khan. Both became British champions, Miss Fatima, and we see here the final result of the British Championship 1933 in Hastings, and Mir Sultan Khan, Mir Sultan Khan even three times in the short four year period. The picture shows him holding the winner's cup or crown in 1932. He represented England in three chess Olympiads on the first board. What we know about their chess is from that short period in London. As an exemplary game, I selected one from the international tournament in Liège 1930 against Russian-born New Belgian Viktor Sultan Bayev. In that tournament, Khan came second behind Sabiali Tatakova, but ahead of Aaron Nimsovich, Frank Marshall, Akiba Rubinstein, among others. Mir Sultan Khan, as black player, plays the Queen's Indian or Nimzu Indian defense. This opening suited him well, having learned chess the Indian rules, where the two-step initial pawn move was absent. Khan plays the whole game in a modern, dynamic, positional way and finishes it off with nice tactic. The first stop is here with White's move e4, which is a positional mistake. It blocks temporarily the long diagonal of the Queen's Indian Bishop, but that diagonal can easily be questioned with a well-prepared f5. White cannot have the hope to dominate in the center after Black's moves Queen c7 and d6. And most importantly, Black now gets the possession of the d4 square for its knight. We will see throughout the whole remaining game that Khan superbly exploits the combination of the long diagonal and the d4 square. We stop again here at move 15. With a5, Khan prevents the white expansion on the queen side with b4, and as a consequence, he can now focus on other parts of the board while still keeping pressure on the queen side, especially on the b-file. The 16th move of black, g5, might be a little aggressive, but Khan was careful enough not to accept right peace sacrifice here with queen e3 in move 16, move 17. In fact, Sultan Bayev was known as a quite aggressive player, so he had to adjust your own game. Khan played carefully queen d8, and now white has to retreat the knight. So here positioning the file, the, the rook in the open file, opening the file with the bishop retreat. The bishop stays on the long diagonal, very important. And look, pressure on b3. Now, the black knight wants to exchange against the defender of d4, one of the knights, which is possible after a4. White immediately takes off the defender of three, on three, f3 and immediately jumps in. Look, what a mighty knight. And there is also double pressure on b3, which means it's binding white pieces for its defense. Bishop d1, defending 
pawn b3 is a little too passive because now the bishop is away from the long diagonal and immediately f5 can follow and not only does the diagonal open up but also the f file for the rook or the rooks of course the second rook moves in white defense but now look at how well positioned black pieces are you can't imagine of better locations for the pieces both rooks on the open f file the bishop on the long diagonal open diagonal the knight on the best imaginable square d4 and the queen defending all important pawns and available to jump in for example queen b7 as a hair spa spare header for the long diagonal no wonder now it's time for the final blow rook f3 sacrifice of the exchange and after the second rook, rook moves in white resigned wherever white retreats his queen for example d2 black will first take on c3 and however white takes back white will either fork king and queen on e2 or on f3 so on internet databases you will find a lot of interesting games of Mir Sultan Khan I think this one really incorporates his style in the best way and if you like to learn more about the person well Daniel King has recently published a book about him which I heard was very well written. Enjoy.